Are you ready for Selenium 4? If not, this 12-minute video is going to show you all the exciting new features that are coming with Selenium 4. My name is Marco Cruz and welcome to Automate Now. Let's dive in. Selenium 4, a new chapter. Why a new chapter? It is because the latest Selenium has been modernized to keep up with the latest technologies, as we're going to be learning in this presentation. Selenium 4 is not officially released yet. Selenium 4 is going through its third beta version, but this doesn't mean that you cannot start playing with the new features that Selenium 4 is going to bring to the table. Some of the new changes include architectural changes, new locator strategies, and support for Chrome DevTools protocol. These and other features are going to allow Selenium to continue to be one of the top software automation tools on the market today. On the screen are the topics that we're going to be covering today. The new Selenium architecture includes changes to Selenium WebDriver as well as Selenium Grid. This presentation will focus mainly on Selenium WebDriver changes. Now let's take a look at the new Selenium WebDriver architecture. On the left here, we have the Selenium ecosystem, and we have different languages that we can choose from when we write our tests. For instance, we can write a test in Java, JavaScript, Python, etc. Then we see the protocol. For the longest time, Selenium WebDriver has been using the JSON Wire protocol. We're going to see what this is used for in a second. On the right box here, we have the browser vendors. Their protocol is the W3C WebDriver protocol. The W3C is an international community that works to develop web standards. Next, we have the browser drivers. And as you know, we have one for each of the major browsers. And then we have the real browsers. The key difference between Selenium and the browser vendors is that they're using different protocols. Selenium is using the JSON Wire protocol, while the browser vendors are using the W3C WebDriver protocol. Now let's take a look at what happens when we write a Selenium test. Let's say that we write a Java test. Those instructions that we write are interpreted by the JSON Wire protocol. The JSON Wire protocol encodes the information and sends the instructions as an HTTP request. That request then goes to the target browser driver. The browser driver then executes our test on the real browser. Upon test completion, our test status is returned as an HTTP response. That response gets decoded by the JSON Wire protocol so that our test can understand what happened when the test ran. Let's say that we try to click on an element and the element was not available. Then we would be able to see that information on the IDE that we're using. So the main function of the JSON Wire protocol is to encode and decode information. Now let's take a look at what the new web driver architecture looks like. And the first thing that we notice is this big red X, which means that we no longer have the JSON Wire protocol with Selenium 4. It is completely being ripped out of WebDriver. And what this means is that Selenium and the browser vendors are using the same protocol, which is a W3C WebDriver protocol. So really, the differences lie at the protocol level and not at the API level. In fact, you may not notice any major differences when you upgrade from Selenium 3 up to Selenium 4. And this may help answer one question that you may be asking. Will upgrading to Selenium 4 break my existing tests? And the short answer is no. There may be a few things here and there that you may need to change. But if you are already using the latest stable version of Selenium, for example 3.141.59, you are already using the W3C WebDriver protocol. And that is because the JSON Wire protocol and the W3C WebDriver protocol coexist in the latest Selenium versions. This also means that there is no need for the JSON Wire protocol to encode and decode information. And this is because Selenium WebDriver and the browser vendors are speaking the same language, if you will. As a result, tests are going to be more stable. They are also going to run smoother because there won't be any need to encode or decode information. This will also be good news for browser compatibility testing. You will no longer need to write special code to run your tests in different browsers. You may have come across a scenario in which you run a test in a browser and it passes, and then you run the same test in a different browser and it fails. These type of issues will hopefully no longer exist with Selenium 4. Now let's take a look at another exciting new feature, which is relative locators. We used to only be able to locate elements by using the by locators, such as by ID, by CSS, by XPath, etc. Now the find element method accepts a new method called with tag name, and this new method returns a relative locator. And this is the means that we're going to use to locate elements that are nearby. I consider this to be a great addition to Selenium some of the common issues are going to be easier to deal with. For example, when we have elements with dynamic IDs or complex XPath. Let's take a look at how we can use the relative locators. And here we have example application, which has an image with a question mark, some text, and two buttons. 
The first thing that we do is to import the with tag name method from the relative locator class. Now let's say that we want to locate this element with the image here. The first thing that we can do is to find the text, which is this text here. And we can do that the old way, by simply saying driver that find element and give the ID for that text. Then to locate the image, we can say driver that find element and we use the new method with the tag name. We pass in the HTML tag and then we say dot and here we can use a relative locator. In this case, I'm using above. So this line here is saying find the web element that has the tag name IMG that is above the text. In our case here, the only element that is going to match that description is going to be this image right here. Now, what if we want to find the text? In a similar way, we start with a reference element. This case is going to be the image. Once we locate the image, we can say find element with tag name and pass in the tag name for this text. And then we use the relative locator method called below. So find the element that is below the image. And this will give us back this web element right here. Let's see how we can find one of the buttons. In this case, we're going to try to find the OK button. So we can start by finding the cancel button. Then we find the OK button by saying find the web element with the tag name button that is to the left of the cancel button. And as you might imagine, to find the cancel button, we could start with the OK button. And then we can say find the button that lies to the right of the OK button. Lastly, we use the near relative locator method to locate this text here. We could start with the cancel button, or we could start with the OK button, or even the image. In this example, I'm going to start with the cancel button. Once I find the cancel button, I can say find the element with the tag name and give the tag name for this text here, and then I say dot near the cancel button. The only element that is going to match this description will be this text here. And one thing to keep in mind is that it's going to try to find the web element that matches our description within 100 pixels of the starting element. Next, we have web element screenshots. In the past, we used to be able to take a screenshot of the entire web page, but now we can take a screenshot of an individual web element. This could be useful if you just want to focus your attention to a single web element when your test runs. Let's say for example that we navigate to automainnow.io and we want to make sure that this welcome message is displayed on the screen. We start by locating the web element and then we can call this method on that web element, get screenshot as. Then we can save that screenshot. When we open that screenshot after the test runs, you're going to notice that the screenshot is only going to contain that single web element, not the entire web page. Here are some other things that we can do with Selenium 4. With older versions of Selenium, we used to be able to maximize the window or make it full screen, but now we can also minimize the window by saying window.minimize. We can open a new window by saying switch to that new window and in the window type we say window. If you just want to open a new tab, we use the same technique but we specify tab as the window type. In some cases, you're going to notice that tests are going to be easier to read and write. For instance, before Selenium 4, we used to declare an implicit weight as follows. In this case, we would specify the number of seconds and then we will use time unit dot seconds. With Selenium 4, we use a duration object and we say duration dot of seconds and then we specify the seconds. Now let's take a look at what I consider the most exciting new feature, which is support for the Chrome DevTools protocol. What is Chrome Developer Tools? It is a set of web developer tools built directly into the Google Chrome browser. This also means that it's only available for Google Chrome. Other new automation tools such as Cypress, Puppeteer, Playwright are already taking advantage of the Chrome DevTools protocol. Selenium is now joining the game. And the way this works is that Chrome driver used to extend the remote web driver, but it now extends the Chromium driver. Some of the things that we can do with this new feature is emulate geolocation, change device display size, cookie management, cache management, and much more. Let's see how we could emulate network conditions. Let's say that we want to emulate no internet connection. The way we would manually do this in Chrome DevTools is by clicking the network tab and then selecting offline. Here we have a test. And in this test, we have an instance of Chrome driver. We also have a hash map, and this hash map is specifying some network conditions. For example, we're saying offline should be true, meaning that there will be no internet connection. We also have some other parameters on here that are listed but are not required to be on here. For example, latency, or not being able to download or upload documents. 
So the new command that we're going to call here is called driver.executeCDPcommand. And this requires two parameters. First is the command that we want to execute. In this case, it's network that emulate network conditions. And then we're passing the map containing the conditions that we want. When we navigate to automatenow.io, all we're going to get is a page like this, stating that there is no internet connection. Let's take a look at another example. Here we're emulating geolocation. Notice that again we have a hash map that contains the latitude and longitude and accuracy parameters. Then we call driver that execute CDP command and we say emulation.set geolocation override and we pass in the parameters. When this test runs, it's going to navigate to google.com and then it will search for car rental near me. The results that we see are going to be based on the geolocation that we passed in here. This example is used in Sydney, Australia, so I'm going to see car rental companies in Sydney, Australia. If you would like to learn more about the different CDP commands that we can use, please refer to the video description for the link. Now let's discuss what else is new in Selenium 4. And first is Selenium Grid. Selenium Grid is going from version 2 to version 4. And some of the things that you're going to notice that a node can run sessions in a Docker container. It also supports IPv6 addresses. Users can also communicate with the grid using HTTPS protocol. And the graphical user interface has been remodeled. The Selenium ID has also been improved greatly. Also, Opera and PhantomJS are no longer supported. Desired capabilities is being replaced by options. You will also notice that the Selenium website has been redesigned and the documentation has been updated. And lastly, Selenium has adopted the W3C Actions API. So what are the key takeaways here? First is that the new architecture makes your tests more reliable. Also, tests are easier to read and write. And lastly, support for Chrome DevTools protocol puts you in control. If you have any questions or comments on Selenium 4, please leave them in the comment section. I would love to hear them. And if you enjoyed this presentation, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you and see you in the next video. Thank you.